Hi everyone, this is Nurse Ryan, and today we're going to go over some practice questions for coagulation modifier drugs as an introduction to pharmacology. In this quiz, we'll review some of the basics, including anticoagulants, antiplatelets, INR, and more. I'll walk you through the answers and rationales for each question. Starting off with question number one, the role of anticoagulants and antiplatelets is to dissolve or break down blood clots. And for each question, I'll leave a bit of a break where you can pause and think about the answer. So the answer here is B, false. Anticoagulants and antiplatelets will decrease the formation of new clots and decrease the ability for existing clots to grow in size. However, thrombolytic drugs are responsible for actually breaking down or dissolving pre-existing clots. And question two, a client taking anticoagulants asks the nurse if he is allowed to shave his face. The most appropriate response from the nurse is, and the answer here is B, it would be best to shave with an electric razor. Anticoagulants increase the risk for bleeding. Electric razors are safer than manual razors and decrease the incidence of bleeding. It is important to remember that minor cuts may bleed for much longer in patients who are taking anticoagulants. However, the patient's independence should also be maintained when possible. And question number three. A client has received a new order for scheduled doses of warfarin or coumadin and remembers hearing that vitamin K plays a role in its effectiveness. What is the most appropriate response from the nurse? And the answer here is B, keep eating the same amount of vitamin K that you are used to eating throughout the day. The dose of warfarin will be adjusted accordingly. Now this answer may depend on institutional policy, but foods that are high in vitamin K are generally high in other important nutrients. Therefore, it is important that the patient continues to eat these foods and the dose of warfarin will then be adjusted accordingly. Question number four, a client taking warfarin has their international normalized ratio or INR tested. The results show that their INR is 4.1. What do you expect the doctor will order? The answer here is D, a decrease in the dose or frequency of warfarin. The normal range for INR is about 2 to 3 or 2 to 3.5. An INR of 4.1 is definitely too high, and when INR is high, the patient's blood is clotting too slowly. So a high INR puts the client at an increased risk for bleeding. Therefore, a decrease in the dose or frequency of warfarin, which is an anticoagulant, should be expected. Question number five, to break down pre-existing blood clots, which of the following treatments is required? And we kind of already went over the answer here, but the answer is A, thrombolytics. Thrombolytic drugs are required to break down pre-existing blood clots. Question number six, the antidote for unfractionated heparin is? The answer is A, protamine sulfate. Protamine sulfate binds to and inhibits heparin's anticoagulation effect. Question number seven, when a blood vessel is injured, platelet adhesion occurs before the clotting cascade. And this is a true. Platelet adhesion first forms a kind of net which blocks red blood cells from leaving the injured vessel. This net also allows the clotting cascade to form a seal on the injured vessel to prevent any leakage of blood from escaping. Moving on to question number eight. All blood clots can be dangerous and life-threatening and therefore should be avoided at all costs, no matter the cause. And this answer is B, false. The majority of blood clots that occur in the body are actually necessary to prevent leakage of blood in the event of injury. These clots are all examples of good or normal blood clots, which are eventually removed naturally by the body. However, abnormal clotting can occur on the inside of blood vessels without being removed naturally by the body. These abnormal clots are dangerous and can be life-threatening. Question number nine, which of the following clients would the nurse be most concerned for if he or she sees an order for an anticoagulant. And this is C, a client who is actively bleeding. Anticoagulants are contraindicated in clients who are actively bleeding due to the drug's increased risk for bleeding. And our last question for this quiz, number 10, when administering unfractionated heparin or a low molecular weight heparin by the subcutaneous route, it is important to massage the site after the injection to reduce swelling. 
The right answer here is B, false. Massaging the site may increase the risk for bruising and bleeding after the administration of subcutaneous medication, especially when administering anticoagulants. And that's it for the coagulation modifier drugs quiz. If this video has helped you out, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. If you have any questions or would like me to review a specific drug or topic, please let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.